Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Working With Miniatures. My name is Jim, and today we're gonna to be building storage for my Dust 1942 models. Previously, I'd been keeping them in a plastic storage container, but after putting the brush to them, I needed something that would better protect the painted work. This is the finished product, which I designed after a old World War II ammo crate. This will also keep it in theme with the game of Dust 1942. The face is held on by cabinet magnets and each shelf is removable. The figures are attached to the shelves with neodymium magnets. The first thing you may notice is that each one of the shelves has slightly warped. The warping occurred a few days after painting and gluing the sheet metal to the Luan. Both the sheet metal and Luan were plumb and flat and were stored that way until use. The weight of the miniatures didn't cause the warping or would be sagging down and not bowing up. My guess it was caused by the paint the glue or the combination of both. Before purchasing any of these materials, I had laid my armies out to ensure that the sheet metal would be sufficient to accommodate my current and future models. Now that you've seen the end results, let's take a look at the materials and steps that led us here. Starting with the shelves, I measured the sheet metal and added a quarter inch to both of the short sides and a quarter inch to one of the long sides. This extra width will be what slides into the dado joint and allow for some figure overhang. After making the first cut, I remeasure the shelf to ensure it's what I want and then cut the other three without moving the fence. I measure and mark the length next, readjust my fence and make the final cut on each shelf. A table saw will save you time over a circular saw, as the fence allows you to skip measuring as well as making square cuts easier. With each shelf a light sanding around the edges, knocking off any splinters, I'm not worried about getting a smooth finished edge, as I'm going for a rough and weathered look. The shelf sanded, I begin adding wood glue and spread it with scrap. Using scrap instead of a putty knife allows me the luxury of throwing it away instead of having to clean up after it. After wiping away excess glue, I stack the shelves out of the way and carefully add weight to ensure it dries flat. I let this set overnight. For the box, I measure the sides a quarter inch wider than the shelves to allow distance between the front cover and figures inside. Since the back will be 15 by 30 second plywood, I'm not as concerned about unintentional impact as I am with the quarter inch front. With the box sides marked, I cut two to width. Quarter inch from the bottom of the side, I make two marks that are a quarter inch wide. This will be where I cut the dado joint for the bottom shelf. I then measure two and a half inches further up and repeat until I have places for all four shelves. And then I do this for the other side. Set the blade height to half the width of the plywood and line it up. I cut each shelf before adjusting the fence. Since the dado must be a quarter inch wide, but the teeth on my blade is only one eighth inch wide, I will have to make two cuts for each dado slot. Alternatively, you can make these cuts with a router or dado blade stack, but because there were so few cuts and the math was perfect, it would be quicker for me to use the table saw. After all the dados are cut, I use a quarter inch scrap to test each recess. And then cut the shelves to length two and a half inches above the top dado.
Hit the sides with 120 grit sandpaper, just enough to knock off any splinters. The tip, remember to measure between the fence and the front and back piece of the blade. The height on the back piece will be equal to the side, but the length will be equal to the length of the shells plus 5 eighths of an inch. This will allow for 5 sixteenths of an inch clearance on each side, assuring that the shelf fit isn't too tight. Put the top and bottom to the same width and height. Originally I planned to use the 15 by 32nd inch for the bottom, but I decided to use quarter inch to reduce the overall weight. After sanding, I removed any stickers and lightly scorched the wood with a propane hand torch. Repeat this for each piece of the box, excluding the shelves. Be particularly careful when scorching the quarter inch boards, as it will bubble and blister if it gets too hot. Keep the flame moving, but don't move too slow or too fast, and also be careful not to burn yourself. I then head over to my compressor and start fitting and nailing the box together. Having covered the workspace first, I use a clean rag to apply tongue oil over the entire box to seal it, and carefully wipe away any excess. Partially driven screws into some scrap to make stands for the box to cure on so it doesn't stick to the work surface when it dries. Measuring for the front, I cut more quarter inch from an additional 2 foot by 2 foot sheet that I had on hand. Originally, I planned to do this out of plexiglass so the box could act as a display case while protecting the figures from dust and animal hair. Instead, I decided to make it resemble an old World War II ammo crate. I that I forgot to turn the camera on and did not film the next segment, where I then cut two narrow strips out of quarter inch and used shallow screws to attach them to the front. I applied tongue oil to these strips as well and let them and the box sit overnight. The next day I returned to the shelves after the glue has had time to set and bid hello to my assistant Pumpkin before using steel wool to clean any rust from the sheet metal. I then applied painter's tape over all of the metal careful to cover the lines and edges. I repeat this for each shelf. On a prepared work surface, I place a short scrap of 2x4 on the table and place a shelf on it to paint the face. I then flip it and paint the bottom. Since the 2x4 is short and I'm careful to center it, I'm able to paint both sides at once. I then carefully transfer it inside by supporting it only where the painter's tape is on the bottom and place it on stands made from more scraps with screws partially drilled into them. I repeat this for each shelf and then let them sit overnight. The next day I return and remove all of the painter's tape. After this there is another step I failed to record where I used the letter and number stencil on the right side of your screen to draw on the front cover before installing the magnetic door catches. With everything complete I assemble the box, magnetize my army, and put them away. I hope you learned something and were inspired by this video to tackle your own storage needs. If you have any questions or would like to leave a comment, please do so. Also, if you like the content of this video and like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. This is Jim with Working With Miniatures, bidding you a fond farewell. Until the next time.